I just went to sleep like a normal day. And when I woke up, I thought I was dreaming. I'm like, okay, this is a dream. Um, immediately, I knew the atmosphere was different. I was like, this is not my house. Um, and I also know that in dream world, sometimes it can seem like two or three days and you've only been asleep for like maybe five hours. So this whole time, I'm just like, man, I'm just dreaming, you know? So then um, my mom wakes up, she's like, you're ready for school. Like, what are you doing? And so I'm like, okay, this, like, this dream is really gonna have me go through the motions. And um, so I'm thinking I'm dreaming, but it doesn't stop. Like I go to school, I come back home and this happens for days. And to the point that I'm like, oh, what? Like, I'm, I need my kids to wake me up. Like they should be hungry by now. Something has to be going on. And to the point, I'm just got to a point. I'm like, I'm not going to wake up. A quick disclaimer before we get started on today's show. This episode has mentions of suicide and domestic violence. If you or anyone has experienced these, please check out the show notes for resources. Let's get into the show. Michelle Williams, thank you so much for stopping by Shifting Dimensions. I'm really excited to speak with you today because you have a remarkable story that you first shared in 2021. And I think since then you've shared it a couple of times on TikTok. And I think it's a powerful story. Um, So I'm going to let you share your story because from my understanding, you shifted to a parallel reality or parallel universe, whatever term you want to use it. And your life has not been the same since. So can you just talk to me about your story? Who were you in your previous reality? And when did you shift? So I'm the same person. Um, I literally had two children and I knew it was a boy, it was a girl. And I just went to sleep like a normal day. And when I woke up, I thought I was dreaming. I'm like, okay, this is a dream. Um, Immediately I knew the atmosphere was different. I was like, this is not my house. Um, Not only that, but it was pitch black and I felt someone next to me, but it wasn't like a something alarming. It was a, okay, someone I know, like a comfortable feeling. And so I go, I'm feeling around the room because like it says pitch black. And when I open the door, I look across and I see my sister who's deceased across the way and she's getting ready for school. She's in high school. And one thing I also noticed when I jumped up, my body was light. Like, you know, I have have meat on my bones, so. (laughs) But my body was light and I'm like, okay. So then I, I see my sister, I run, I give her a big old hug. But to me, I think I'm dreaming. I've always been the type that, I guess you could call like astral you know, what you're dreaming, but, um, or live it, uh, sorry, lucid dreaming, because um, I've always kind of know I'm dreaming, um, been able to talk to people in my dreams. So that wasn't nothing new to me to see my sister and to be able to like hug her. And so she's like, get off of me, you're bothered. Like, ah, you know, like the big sister that's irritated with the little sister. And so I'm like, okay. And I also know that in dream world, sometimes it can seem like two or three days and you've only been asleep for like maybe five hours. So this whole time, I'm just like, man, I'm just dreaming, you know? So then um, my mom wakes up. She's like, you're ready for school. Like, what are you doing? And so I'm like, okay, this like this dream is really going to have me go through the motions. And um, so I'm thinking I'm dreaming, but it doesn't stop. Like, I go to school. I come back home. And this happens for days. And to the point that I'm like, oh, what? Like, I'm, I need my kids to wake me up. Like, they should be hungry by now. Something has to be going on. And to the point, I'm just got to a point, I'm like, I'm not going to wake up. And I remember missing my children so much. Like, it was like a void. You know how something's just missing? It just felt like something was missing. And my partner, I kind of remember having one, but not to the extent of me remembering my kids. And so then um, I realized I'm not going back. And so at this time, I'm like, oh, goodness, I didn't really take the time to really think everything through because the whole time I thought it was a dream. So I didn't get the time to think about, okay, what was my kid's name? Uh, what was anything that was from that universe? I didn't write down because I'm thinking I'm dreaming. But then at that time, I also remember, okay, I'm 10 now. From now to 23, I know for a fact my sister isn't supposed to be here. I know that for a fact. And so I was like, okay, now did I come back here to change, to try to see if there's something I can do to prevent this from happening? Um, and, and it just like, I just knew things, um, but she she was, I'm not sure if a lot of people know, am I allowed to talk like say suicide and stuff here? Okay, um, her her husband, he um, 
he murdered her and then he committed suicide afterwards. Um, and so when I first met her husband, they were high, high school sweethearts. So I came back to a time where they were starting to meet, you know, um, and I never I didn't like him. I didn't like him. And there was no reason for me not to like him. It's not like he was mean to me. He was very nice. He would like buy her Valentine's gifts, buy me Valentine's gifts, Easter baskets. Like there was no reason for me not to like him. And I just, I couldn't like him. Like everything in my body was just like, this isn't right, you know? And so um, they get married and everything pretty much plays out kind of the same way. And I didn't know how to prevent it. And I didn't know that that was really was even what's going to happen. You know, I'm like, is she in a car accident? I don't know what happens until one day um, it kind of, someone was living with my sister and they pulled me aside and they said, Hey, I want you to know her ex-husband, cause they're in the process of trying to get a divorce uh, is stalking her. And um, when he knocked on the door, he was banging on it. I didn't see him. It was like a demonic spirit inside of him. Like that was banging on the door. So she's like, he's going to kill your sister. And I'm 16 at the time. I don't, you know, it's a lot of information. The most I could do was tell my mom. And then my mom set her aside and talked. But my sister didn't want us to really know. She was kind of keeping everything away from us. So she called his mom. And she's like, hey, I just want to let you know, um, your son is threatening, th threatening my daughter. And if you don't do something about it, I'm going to do something about it. And she didn't even know he had a gun and everything. He had been um, like pretty much threatening her with the gun. And so at that time when she said that, Everything came to my memory. It's like, remembrance, this is how it's going to happen. So when she said that, I ran in my room and I just cried. I bawled and I just prayed to God. I was like, God, because we were really like my mom. We weren't always religious, but around this time we were. And I just like praying and crying. And I never told my my mother or my sister that I came from, uh, you know, uh, came back because I didn't think they would believe me. Um, we were like religious. So we were believed not to speak things. If you speak, it'll come into existence. So it was like, I didn't want to speak negative or saying that my sister would pass. Maybe if I, I didn't want to speak it into happening, you know? Um, and so then after that conversation, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. And the next thing I know, um, that day that it happened, I came upstairs. Mom, she had already moved out with, she lived with her kids somewhere else. And at the time I was kind of living with her back and forth between her and my mom's um, because me and my mom weren't getting along too well. But I was walking upstairs and this is before like MP3s and everything. It was the radio. And I, I walk upstairs and I go to go turn on the radio. But at the same time, I'm singing Aaliyah, I miss you. And I was a part like, now I'm sitting here thinking about you. And I turn it on and she's saying it at the very same time that I said it and chills go down my body. And then the phone rings. And when the phone rings, it only rings once. And there's a big picture of my sister and her two children that are right there by the phone. And when the phone rang, I go there and I get a black, I call it a premonition. My whole vision goes black and all I see is a brown casket and that picture of my sister and her kids. And then like, so the phone only rang once. It was like something made me go, I needed to be right there. Uh, me and that day, me and my sister had gotten an argument about some money and something like, I, I didn't want to go see her. I'm like, I'm not going to go see her. You know, she knows where my money is and she's not telling me. But what I didn't know was he had got her car towed and she needed my money to get the car from being towed. Like he was a menace all the way to the end to her. Um, so, but something said, no, go see your sister. So I'm so mad, <laughs> but I had to follow this instinct. And um, I went to go see her before she left. Um, and then by that day, I was at my friend's house. My aunt came and told me that it happened. And um, that's pretty much where most of my deja vu happened. Um, I did have deja vu again with like seeing people I met. I already knew they were going to be a part of my story. Like my um, best friend, I ended up having two ch children with her, her brother. But I didn't know that at first. I ended up, But I knew she was going to be a part of my life. And it's because like, I don't know. It's just like you just it's like I knew who my tribe was. And so then from there, when I met him right away, I knew who he was. And so when I gave birth to my daughter, that fullness came back and I was like, this is her. Like, so everything kind of played back again. And so a lot of people always say, you know, do you remember different timelines? No, it just kind of overlaps. Like the new memories overlap any of the old memories. And once again, when I came back, it was like a dream. Like after a dream, you know all the details right away. But once you've gone throughout the day so much, those details start slowly fading away and you don't remember it like you used to. And so that's kind of how it went from the previous time of the details just kind of fading away and everything turning into the new timeline. Wow, there's so much there. There are a couple of things I want to ask. 
there. Um, I know your sister has passed now for many years, but I can't even imagine knowing that that was going to happen and not really being able to stop it, right? Because I'm sure one of the questions people ask you um, or something you've probably contended with yourself is that if I knew this was going to happen, why couldn't happen? Why couldn't I have stopped it? So just a level set with um for the audience. You went to bed, I think you said when you were about 24 years old. Um, 23. 23, sorry. When you were 23 <laughs> years old and you had two kids at the time, you were with your partner. You basically lived 23 years of your life. And then all of a sudden you wake up in your 10 year old body. And at mm -hmm. first you think you're dreaming. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm, sure you know i'm i'm dreaming you see your sister who had already passed in your previous timeline and you're hugging her and you're like okay eventually i'm going to wake up and you never wake up before we even get into the stuff with your sister when did you how did you feel when you realized like am i reliving a life that i had already seen did you still think it was a dream like when did you realize that you probably might have shifted potentially to a new reality. I didn't even understand the word shifting until recently, like not recently, but when I first told my story, um, mm -hmm. I always thought this was something, I didn't know this was a thing, you know? So when I told the story and people are like, oh, you shifted, you, you're, they're, 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 they're giving me all this terminology. And I'm like, oh, let me look this up because you're trying to tell me this actually is something, you know? Um, it just, I don't know. I feel like maybe two weeks of being a child, like really not being able to get out the house and go when I want to, um, chores again you know it's like it was like wow I really homework again and people say were you good at school I've always been kind of good at school and I've always my nickname is old soul so a lot of people are like you probably like a really mature kid but I've from all I've known I've always been called old soul and so um yeah so I would probably say like two weeks of, of just I'm like hey this isn't <laughs> no one's waking me up and it was just like hey and then the longing for my kids was the worst like I miss them so much like it was just like a hole was in my heart. Like something's missing. Every day I wake up and just be like, gosh, like, and I, and it started, like, I started forgetting, not forgetting them, but you know, the details, like I know it was a boy and a girl. I didn't remember their names. I didn't remember how old they were when I was 23, but I knew they were young. You know, I know like my son was either in diapers and I know my da other daughter, my daughter was older. So even when I had my first kids, I knew my first one's going to be a girl. Wow. And you know, you, you, you said that during that time, um, it was one of those situations where you didn't feel like you could talk to anyone about it. I think even now, if that were to happen to someone, it's hard to tell people because the first thing they're going to say is like, oh, maybe you were dreaming or that's crazy. But I, I mean, I didn't have your experience, but from what you're explaining and from what I've heard related to shifting um, timelines and jumping from one reality to the next, it sounds close to that more than a dream because I think, yes, time is different in the dream world and you can experience 20 years in a dream. But the way you explain it seems like, you know, you actually lived your mm -hmm. life up until 23 years old. Like you remember mm -hmm. being an adult, being a mom and everything. And then all of a sudden now you're kind of reliving potentially the same experience and you're getting premonitions or what seem like premonitions, but things that have already happened like coming to your frame of consciousness, especially related to your sister. Um, mm -hmm. So let's let's talk about that a little bit if you're comfortable. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so with you knowing what happened, what was going to happen with your sister, how did you deal with not being able to stop it? Where have you arrived on that? And do people ask you those type of questions? Why weren't you able to stop it? All the time. Um, I blame myself a lot because I was like, like why did I have this opportunity to go back if this is the one thing I couldn't stop it but what I had to understand was sometimes you wouldn't I don't know what it would have changed if I was able to change it you know like there may maybe there would have been a whole different outline for my my life than I thought it would have been you know um I felt really guilty at first but then I had to understand like Michelle that's not your board your burden to carry like um because my mom felt guilty too because my mother said she was in the shower and the Lord told her in a loud voice, she said, it felt like thunder, get Shalonda out of town now. And she said, now the wall shook. And she tried to, like, she, she told my aunt, I need to send her out to you. Um, she's going to take our rent money. She was like, don't worry about me. I'll figure it out. The Lord told me to get her out of town. But my, my, my sister, um, I'm not sure if you've ever been around a person that's been stalked, but when they're stalked, they get to a point where they're, um, 
they're they're over it. They're 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 tired. They're worn out because you're worn out mentally. And it had been to the point where he had stalked her so much, called her phone day and night. Like when I tell you, she'd have to take her phone off the, the off the hook because he would just call, call, call. And I was there to see this because I was watching the kids a lot. Call, call, call. And like he wore her down mentally first. And so what she told my mom, she said, Mom, I can't leave. I My um, boss is out of town right now. And he has my girls. I'm not going anywhere without my girls. She said, I'm at peace, Mom. Whatever happens, happens. So if she came to that piece, her own, which makes me so sad. I wish she didn't. She was 23 when it happened. So, and that's why I told you 23, because like two and three is so significant. The numbers, it happened in 2003 when she passed away. She was 23. I was 23 when I went back to being 10 and her kids were two and three. So, yeah. So like, it's so much of that, you know. It's profound symbolism, I should say. I mean, 23, I, I really do think that there's power in numbers. And I think God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, that's one of the ways um, it, it's communicated to us. So you coming back, you know, from your 23-year-old self into your 10-year-old self, her passing away in 2003 and her being 23 as well, and her children were two and three, that's incredible do you know what the significance of 23 is have you ever looked up what that number means no not 23 i do look up um like because her her numbers are 417 and 717 the day she was born the day she died i see those everywhere when i tell you wow. everywhere i see them everywhere and that's kind of let me know like you're on the right path i feel like she's guiding me and she's kind of being with me i never really looked at 23 um i always felt like my sister may have been my daughter reincarnated I'm not mm -hmm. sure though. Mm -hmm. And her birthday is March 23rd. That's another 23. Wow. And so it's just like, it's the number 23 is all over. And if I ever write a book about this, it's going to be for sure called 23. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's interesting too, because in your story, like when I heard it on TikTok as well, you you said that your, your, your mom also had like a vision. She had a knowing and she had told your sister. And, and I think your sister was like, you know, like you said, she was beaten down so much. She was exhausted. She's just like, I'm not going to go anywhere without, my children right so I guess there was a window of opportunity potentially to have something be different but it seems like I, I've heard a lot of people talk about um, timelines and alternate realities right but they always say when it comes to are there fixed events that no matter what no matter what timeline you're on it's a fixed event that is supposed to happen right mm -hmm. um, so when you were talking about this whole situation it kind of reminded me of some of those theories where people say like yes alternate realities exist but there are certain fixed events that the person who's on that timeline is destined to kind of experience mm -hmm. um so I I find that like very interesting um I know you also said that you struggled with your spirituality or you struggled with your relationship with God for some time Mm -hmm. after that happened can you kind of talk about that and elaborate on that yeah it was just like me and my sister we went to church every Wednesday every Sunday I helped her get the girls together um he even stalked her in church he would sit behind us and it's like how evil can you be for something to do something like that but um and it was just like I I just didn't get it I didn't understand like why out of all the people that's out here doing wrong or hurt she was a great person and I'm not saying it just because that was my sister like she would give the shirt off her back for anyone. Like she was nicer than me and I'm pretty nice, but she she was nicer than me. And so it just wasn't one plus one wasn't equal and two to me. Why would you allow this to happen to someone, you know, that's so great that comes to your house? Um, And so it really, it shook the core of my foundation. But honestly, I feel like it was needed. Um, Sometimes it's not the easy times. It's those hard times where you really find like, what it is that you believe. And I believe in God now, but I believe in him in a completely different way. I don't, I don't say that I'm Christian. Um, I'm more spiritual. Um, I believe like if this situation had never happened, I don't think I would believe anyone who had talked and said like all the conversation we're having now without this experience, I probably would never be here having this conversation with you. This would have been like off the charts to me, you know, out of my, out of my norm. Um, but God pretty much told me like, you know, I didn't take her from you. I didn't take her and put her in a worse place. She's in a better place than you could even imagine, you know? Um, and now that I've became spiritual, I understand that uh, that it doesn't, that energy doesn't die. So I know that she's not in heaven or she's not in a hell. Like she's still around. Even if I can't see her, I can feel her, the numbers 
and everything. So my relationship with God is it's good now. Um, it's not completely the, like I said, traditional one, but I feel like I'm closer with him more now than I've ever been at any church. I hear him. He gives me downloads. Like it's, I feel like I took the, the middleman out. There's no third person. I'm not going to this person to see if you can get me to God. It's like, okay, I took that person out and there's just a, a straight ether between me and him. I love that. It's interesting that you said that if this experience didn't happen to you, you you hearing a similar conversation would have thought this is like crazy. And I and and that's the thing. A lot of people think these things are crazy. I've never had these. I've never had this experience. Right. And I also want to ask you, um, like, how did you know you were in a different reality or what was different to you when you woke up in your 10 year old body? I've never had this experience, but I've had enough um, supernatural experiences, whether it's having a random knowing, right, where my intuition will tell me something and how am I supposed to know that and that thing happens, or even having very vivid dreams that end up turning out to be real in the waking world, quote unquote. I've always mm -hmm. kind of known ever since I was younger, like what we're told about reality, what we're told about this world is far beyond our understanding. And we probably won't really know until we're no longer in our physical bodies, but that's why I want to talk to people like you who have these experiences that I personally do not think is crazy. I'm, I'm very much open to the possibility of this actually happening. And I just kind of feel, what do you have to lose by, you know, telling this story or what should I say? What do you have to gain? Because a lot of times people might come at you in a way that they are questioning your sanity and mm -hmm. why would anybody tell a story that makes people look at them sideways, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how did you know that you were, something was different outside of you feeling like, okay, I was just 23, now I'm 10 years old. What else was different about this new reality that you were in? Colors. I always mm -hmm. say the colors aren't as bright as they were when I was a kid the first time. <laughs> it sounds so funny to say, but the first time. Um, colors were brighter. I feel like it's more hot. And I know that sounds kind of crazy. And I'm not sure if it has to do with global warming or whatever. But honestly, even growing up as a kid again, um, <laughs> this is gonna be funny, but I've always had a big forehead growing up. And so <laughs> and so like my mom would always grease it up. But like the first time I just remember I could like play all day in that worry of have a care in the world. I feel like the same time when I did it, like my forehead would burn from the sun being so hot. So I've always felt the atmosphere was like more hot here and that colors were like ashy. They weren't as vibrant. And people say, oh, it's because the older you get. But no, this is from when I was younger. Like colors weren't popping. And when I was before, colors used to pop. They used to be so gorgeous. And it's just like, uh. and then food. Food is like, uh, it's not as great as I remember it or, or I was having it the first time. It's like, okay, it's more bland. And it's just like, it's not feeling like it, I feel like it used to be at my one of my other at the other time. Did you experience what people talked about relating to the Mandela effect, right? Where it's like, oh, Mandela didn't die at the time we thought he died or like some other little, little things. Did you have those experiences as well where it seemed like historical facts from your previous reality were kind of different in this new reality that you were in? Definitely. Every, almost every Mandela effect. There's a couple that I'm kind of like, okay, I don't know about that. But like, especially I knew he had already passed away previously. Um, and another one, I feel like I just, it, I could have sworn Stephen King passed away. I just looked and he's like still here. Someone said that he just wrote a book two years ago. And I'm like, no, Stephen King already passed away. So I do have a lot of the Mandela's effect, the Monopoly man with his little monocle, um, Fruit Loops was not spelt that way. And I have like the, I have the greatest memory. My friend says like, you remember stuff when you were two. There's times I feel like I remember being in the stomach with my mother. Like I have great memory and I'm just like, I can and have photogenic memory. Like I can close my eyes and I can see something. So I can see it the way it is, the cornucopia on the fruit, fruit alone, like all that stuff. And I'm just, when you go back, I'm like, are you serious? Jiff and Jiffy, like almost all those, I'm like, that's another reason that made me think, okay, maybe I shift timelines because I was explaining to you, I didn't know what this was at first. And so when everybody kept saying little things and and I started looking stuff up at first, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to piece it together. Was it a dream? Was it, uh, did I astral? Like, I'm trying to get everything together. And then I look at the Mandela effect and I'm like, did I, did I hop timelines? I'm like, cause that's all that stuff there is when I'm known, what I'm used to as a child. And now you guys are saying that is this. So that was kind of what put a little bit of the icing on the cake. It's like, wow, maybe I did hop, 
you know? Yeah, you know, when I first heard about the Mandela effect and all these people from different parts of the world are like, oh my God, I have the same exact memory that you have. That Mandela, I don't know the exact dates, but like Mandela died a lot earlier than this current reality saying that he died. I'm like, why would all these people be lying about that? And, you know, there's so many articles that have come out and they'll say like, oh, you know, they give theories as to why a lot of people might have like false memories, but I don't think these are false memories, right? And right now we're just potentially talking about the fact that you shifted realities, but you said that you were thinking you could have probably astral projected, maybe it was a dream. I think somebody had also commented that maybe you like time traveled, which I guess, I don't know if that's the same thing as like shifting realities um, or you had like a very in-depth psychic vision so can you just talk a little bit more about like the different rabbit holes you went down relating to what you probably might have experienced? I thought maybe I passed away when I was, and then I just came back to another part. Um, I also thought maybe the 10 year old me woke up with two children and a man and I woke up again, like, and I was like, if so, that's like, that's really sad. Like, <laughs> so I don't know. I was just trying to think of anything because it already sounds like and something that could impossible happen you know like that whole story sounds like wow that's impossible so it came to a point where I was like well actually nothing's impossible so I just try to think of every aspect could it be hopped over from being uh, you know a old a, a kid over to being old and it just all kind of things I just try to think of so many and then everybody else had other other um, ones that I didn't agree with some people said maybe you were your sister and I was like no I don't think that because she had her kids I had my kids and now all of us create are created here so I don't think that was it so yeah I don't I honestly don't quite know what exactly uh, is the reason but I yeah. so far I think it's I, I pop timelines is what I honestly believe yeah I I don't think you would be your sister because you came back to meet her and she had her own kids and you had your own kids in your own life so yeah I I, I I mean, how would I know but I I can see that being the least likely thing um mm -hmm. so I know you shared your story in 2021. Had you shared your story with any other family members or friends? Because I know that you're you you talk well about your tribe and the people around you and stuff like that. So what were their reactions when they saw your story? Or did you ever like open up to them and and how did they take it? So 2021 was the first time it went viral. But in 2020, I have it on my page, too, where oh, I wow, told okay. it and it didn't go viral yet. So that's why I told people, people like you just making this. I'm like, hey, I've even said this plenty of times. Like, I didn't know this would go viral. Um, so my tribe, I've told a couple of people and there's some people I even forgot that I told. Like, I'm like, you guys, you know, because I need to sit you guys down before you guys see this on TikTok. Um, I won't let you know. They're like, oh, yeah, you already told me that. I'm like, I did. Like, I didn't. I thought I only told like one person, but like there's like two or three people like, oh, yeah, you already told me this. Like, I remember the story. And I'm like, OK. And they didn't make me feel crazy. So that was that was a blessing. <laughs> I love that. No, that's a huge blessing because I don't think everyone has that luxury. Um, especially I don't know if your tribe is like super religious or anything like that. Um, sometimes having these conversations, people might consider it like a fable or how could that be? But again, I just think that I know astral projection, for example, is a real thing. The government has come out and mm -hmm. they had a whole program around working with people who could astral project so that's a real thing people are now coming out or at least the government is now coming out actively saying that aliens exist which before if anybody was talking about that it just seems so crazy so I think we're being I think we're entering a time where a lot of these things that people are experiencing people are more open to them even though we can't 100% prove them but I think these stories are worth sharing um, mm -hmm. I saw somebody else comment on one of your posts and they were like, well, if you lived this life and you're back here, how come you aren't rich? You know, I'm sure you get that question a lot. How do you answer all that? The time. <laughs> all the time. And it's like, it's so, it's, it's a little irritating to me. And the reason why is because it's like, you guys think about everything. This is a worldly possession. Like if something happens, I'm not gonna be able to take any of this away, but the spiritual, I feel like it was like a spiritual, um, gain so maybe not financial but a spiritual gain and so I'd rather have my spirit be fed or to experience because like I said I believe it so that I could be on the path I am with spirituality I needed that and another thing I say maybe we do this all the time and the glitch because you know what they say is a glitch in the matrix maybe the glitch was that I remembered it you know 
not saying that this doesn't happen with everyone. Maybe it happens all the time. We just don't remember it. But I, the glitch is I really remember it, you know? And that's the where it's like, okay. And a lot of people say, like I had a lot of people ask me, do you think you have an ability or something? You know, I tell, I don't know if like I'm any sp different or special than anyone else. If it could happen to me, it could happen to anyone. I didn't do anything special for it to happen. Um, I, I don't feel like I'm, you know, anything different than anyone else. I just think that I probably wasn't supposed to remember this and, it's like, oh, the universe forgot to do a factory reset. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point. When you said that, my eyes lit up. I'm like, yeah, maybe it happens all the time, potentially, but we're not supposed to remember. I mean, even the concept of reincarnation, for example, people, I don't know if you believe in that concept. I think that that concept seems, it rings true to me. I can never prove it, but just from hearing near-death experiences, just from hearing people or children who can remember their past life and they give details and people look up these people that they've never met on like a different side of the world and they can verify like, oh, this person actually existed and actually they just died last year. How would this child who is five years old in America know about this person in India? You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think there's some truth to it. So even the concept of reincarnation of like coming back and a lot of us forget that we lived all these different lives before. I think you could, that that sounds like a, a probable thing where it probably happens often, but then you just happen to remember that <laughs> something <Yeah. laughs> is different. Like you shifted some sort of reality because people talk about the, the concept of the soul and the higher self and how we are living multiple lives in multiple realities, multiple versions of ourselves, and sometimes in the same body and sometimes in other bodies all at once. Like when we talk about the concept of time, like everything is happening at the same time. So I'm also mm -hmm. thinking maybe, you know, the 10 year old version of yourself was probably happening at the same time of the 23 year old version of yourself, right? Because yeah, with the concept of everything is always happening at once, we think we're getting older or like we're just being born, but everything is at the same time. So like you said, maybe it could be a situation where you you jumped into a parallel reality where you were still 10 at the time you were 23. Mm -hmm. Again, so many things there, um, which I find interesting. And to your point, like it's not about coming back and getting rich it's the spiritual part of it and maybe you were supposed to remember as well in order to start waking people up to the idea of the world and the reality that we actually live in and like the way we think the world operates might not really be the way it operates I know I've been talking so you can respond to anything I've been saying oh no 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 I, I agree with you 100 percent. that's why I tell everyone I think the reason why this happened to me is so I can help awaken other people or awake something within people all the time I hear I don't know why but your, your story gave me chills I don't know why but I felt something you said something awake they say the same words someone awakened in me when you told your story um or some people like you you hit a memory or you you unlock something in me and a lot of my not a lot of my friends but a few of my friends um they were like tr true Jehovah Witnesses right and um they thought I was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs when I started going through my my spiritual awakening and she would say like but I didn't want to overdo it I, you know you don't want to overdo it so I would just leave like little breadcrumbs like okay something to make her think about all of a sudden she's going she's checking it out she comes back talking about okay well leave another little breadcrumb and she tells me all the time Michelle you sparked my spiritual awakening and if that's what I'm here for, then that's even, that's even greater, you know? Um, and that's why I think it, they, some people, I, I feel like I was kind of bold to go out and tell my story, you know? Um, especially like you said, there's no gain from this, <laughs> um, besides people saying I'm schizophrenic and calling me crazy. Um, but besides that, it's like, you know, but there, I'm smart. The people who are supposed to get something from this, they are. And that's why I used to go get so irritated because it is my story and I'm sensitive about it because it really happened to me. And, you know, some people go in there and they make jokes or say out how crazy I am, but it's like, this really happened to me, you know? Like this might be funny and games to you, but to me, I take this really serious. But then it was like, stop worrying about the negative because I have a mass of so many positive, saying so many great things. And the only thing I tell those people that this isn't for you, but who it's attended for, it, it's happening for and when you say like you know the time the future present and past all that is happening at one time um I believe that same thing too and so while my 10 year old self is still doing whatever she's doing I'm here right now on a podcast with you and also you know I believe when we say something like uh, if it's a, a decision say like you sent me saying hey you want to be on the podcast 
One of me said yes, another me might have said no. And so then there's me that said no, that's going on that no timeline. And there's me right now that's in this yes timeline. And I also believe that we can hop and find that yes, where maybe we didn't go to college, but one day we did go to college and I need to tap into that yes of me being on the college. So I believe that we can hop timelines um, and which is something I feel like we're, we're learning more and more about. And it's something I try to look in myself like, okay, um, because I, I do read a lot and I do try to figure out things, but some things I look within and I go inside and I see like, okay, how do, what is my inner self or what is my spirit team or what are my guides telling me that I feel like this would, you know, this is what I should do. So, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. Um, there's so many things that you've said over the, the podcast now that has really resonated with me. And sometimes there's this recent thing that's been happening to me that when something really resonates with me or something rings through I get goosebumps like the hairs on my arms kind of rise up I don't know what that new thing is maybe I mean I like it right because it's kind of like a yes no type of thing um Mm. but the part about like your your spirituality and your spiritual awakening I think you know I think religion plays a big part for a lot of people in this world and I think I don't I'm not the type of person that thinks something's 100% good or 100% bad. I think most things in this world start off with good intentions and they're, I think religion is, is powerful, right? I think we're all looking for something to give us meaning in this world. And for a lot of people, religion gives them meaning. But I do think that sometimes with religion or even education, sometimes I think we get put in a box, right? And anyone that thinks outside of that box could be like demonized or called crazy or schizophrenic, like you said. And um, so I just want to talk about that a little bit more. Like, I just want to get your personal thoughts on religion, because I know that you grew up in a very, you know, religious household and stuff like that. Granted, you have a good community of people who, whether they agree with you or they don't agree with you, they're still like love there and they hold space for you. So I think you're very lucky. But I just want to know if you have any insights on religion and if you think that might potentially be stunting people's awareness of these larger than life concepts that really affect us every single day yes I feel like um a lot of times that religion was used as a weapon more so than as um like shackles pretty much and we're going to go back to slavery um they never wanted us to read books right but why would they give us a bible to read and in that same bible it says that you know you should slaves you should be obedient to your master so am i saying that the bible's incorrect no but what i'm saying is it's been it's been edited so many times by kings james and uh, so many things that's been taken out there all the books aren't even there so we're not even looking at the original bible and i feel like a lot of it has been used as a weapon towards us uh, kind of as a brainwashing mechanism to believe what they wanted us to believe because i don't I'm, and not even they i'm not even saying this as a color thing but this is just me going back into in the history um but i do feel like spirituality is starting to become something that more people are opening up to i feel like uh, it's like a veil that's kind of being released um and i feel like the walls of the church are kind of collapsing a little bit um which it might be something that needs to be done. Um, A lot of people are seeing that, seeing like religion as like money, making money, like the pastors and and things. And like I said on my page, um, why I question God is because I need to be with someone who's authentic. I have to have an authentic person in front of me. If I can't come to you and you can't come to me, even as a pastor, you're in human as well as I'm a human. If you can't tell me, hey, I'm struggling, like, hey, like just for example, I, I'm looking at pornography or something like that. If you can't come, you're coming, we're coming that as ourselves. We all come and we're getting dressed and we're clapping and we're having a good time and we're feeling the word and we're going to go home. And then what? We're no longer in that sermon and this is real life. And that's what I learned. I was masking a lot and it made me more of a I didn't have the boundaries I felt like. I felt like religion didn't give me the boundaries that I have now. But once again, like you made a really good point, there's good and bad in anything. So there's good, I'm not saying that all church people are bad or every uh, every every religion is bad neither, but too much of anything is, is not good. Even if uh, spirituality, you've seen people have come into spiritual psychosis, um, you know, I hate to bring up people, but you know, that lady who just uh, unalived her kids and her her guy and then ran into a, it's too much and there's good and bad in everything. So it's what you tap into. Same thing with church. Some people go to church and they do the worst things inside of that church. 
launder money, um, play with kids, do all kinds of things that they shouldn't do. And then there's some that aren't. So that's in anything. Um, too much of something, too much of anything is or with no balance there. You have to know a balance. And I feel like that's why you have to ground yourself and make sure that you're centered because if you can, you can go off the deep end, there is a deep end. <laughs> there is a rabbit hole where you're not going to see yourself come back from. And so I always tell people, you know, um, use your understanding, inner understanding and to ground yourselves and um, always, but always, always ground yourself, especially if you're going to do astral projection or anything, uh, make sure you ground yourself to the earth and you have protection and you put a shield of protection around yourself. Um, Cause it can be a scary place. And there are other things out there, lower entities, lower vibrational things that you just don't want to, you know, come across. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree with you on, on both ends of the spectrum, whether you consider yourself more religious than spiritual, I think everyone is spiritual. Cause if you're communing with God and trying to build a relationship with God, whether it's through the church and the Bible or the Quran or whatever um, verse, or like if you're doing more shamanistic rituals or whatever, I think everyone is technically spiritual, but you know what I'm trying to say? Um, I think, yeah, you're right. There's a deep end with a lot of things. I think with astral projection, like you said, you want to protect yourself, right? The more I'm a hyper curious person. So I'm constantly asking questions and questioning things. And I'm also, like you said, looking into my inner self, right? How does this resonate with my heart, right? When I talk to God, I, I'm always kind of envisioning myself in surrounded by a ball of light, right? As, mm -hmm. as protection, because like you said, they're lower vibrational entities and some things might appear to be genuine and good. And you interact with that thing and you know, if you're not protective over yourself, or if you're not aware, if you don't ease into certain things, you could be taken advantage of, especially in the spiritual community, because like you said, that woman who unalived herself, unfortunately, who was very deep into astrology um, and some people who were going really deep into spirituality and then running all the way back to the church after um, experiencing some maybe low vibrational entities. And, you know, again, so I think there needs to be caution everywhere, but I also think people need to be open-minded and continue to ask questions and do mm -hmm. that inner work. Um, I think what you said about not having a third party be the person between talk, helping you talk to God, I think we can all kind of develop that closeness to God, um, to the divine. And if we have any questions about our life with practice, we can get those questions directly to us. Of course, God speaks through people. Um, but I think the person God speaks to the most is us if we're able to kind of, you know, listen to that. Um, something else I want to touch on, I don't know if you've been seeing it on TikTok a lot, but people have been talking about this idea of shifting. It just like came up on my feed, I would say in the last couple of weeks where people say like, oh, they pictured themselves in a different reality. Um, they envisioned themselves like they have a family and kids in one reality and they shift back and forth from realities. And I want to get your perspective on that because when we talk about like the deep end of some of these things, to me, it it seems a little scary if I were to wake up right now. Like I had this conversation with you and I wake up and or I go to bed later tonight and I wake up in my 15 year old body. That would be very trippy, right? And so with some of these things that people are exploring or potentially playing with what are your thoughts on people actively trying to shift um do you think it's I don't know if you think it's good or bad but just I guess what what are your thoughts I'll just stop first. I, always, I always tell people be careful because <laughs> it's like oh you woke up 10 again I would love that and it's like it was I think the way that it came upon me was a lot easier than it could have been um, because I thought I was dreaming if I thought that was like real it probably would have hit me hard and I don't know where I could have spiraled to, um, I would, I wouldn't want to shift so much. I understand maybe shifting to a better timeline where you're more established or something like that. I get that, but going back and forth, I don't think I would want to go back and forth. Um, I would get, I feel like I would get confused. I feel like I would get, may get lost, you know, and it's just like, you keep going from here to there. And then like, I tell people all the time, everyone says, are you afraid that it happens? It'll happen again. I said, no, that's not what I'm afraid of. What I'm afraid of is waking up and being like 83 and wrinkled after and I went to bed like in my 30s and now my hips hurt for a reason because you know my hips do be hurting on their own but for a real reason like that that sounds more scary to me um so I wouldn't want to purposely do it and I don't even know if I 
can purposely do it. Um, but I would like to be able to like maybe shift like where I have like maybe a, a porch or a mansion. Like, okay, we can we can go there and maybe stay there, you know, with my kids, but I don't think I would want to go back and forth. It's just too confusing. And what if I mess up something and next thing you know, like I have like a missing tooth when I wake up again from my other like you just don't you don't know. You know, it's nothing wrong missing tooth, but you know, I'm just giving an example. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. I think, you know, my my brain goes on the deep end, right? Like cause you could have a, a reality where Maybe we don't even shift to a different age. Maybe I shift to a version of Jumi that's the same age right now. And I have all these things, but maybe certain people aren't necessarily in my life. And that could be like a shock to my system. Um, so I, I think it's one of those things I'm still like doing research into. And but my initial thoughts is just like to your point of just being careful about shifting right because some people have come out and say like if you want to shift I shifted in six months and this is exactly how I did it like I'm not in the same reality this this and that and again I think with a lot of things in this world we don't always know what we're playing with right I'm not the person that subscribes to oh this is a devil's work this is this this is I, I don't like to be in the fear frequency but I do also understand that there are things in this world that we don't understand. So sometimes we need to be very careful with what we're, you know, playing with, because I think every time that we are jumping or opening ourselves in a psychic way, I think we're not just opening ourselves up for ourselves. I think other entities could potentially use that as a doorway to open, right? Like to your point that you made earlier with your, um, your sister's ex-husband at the time, when that person said like, she, she saw like, the devil in him or like this negative entity in him and people talk about how people are taken over by certain spirits right and I'm not saying that people shifting might be taken over by certain spirits but again it's just this like word of caution to like a lot of stuff that people dabble in but that may not be fully aware of the significance or ramifications of what they're doing because I don't think you would have want to, wanted to come back and relive the stuff that you relived um or being a, a reality where the colors aren't as bright. <laughs> the food. Sorry, that makes a lot of sense because like, you know, I feel like this also, we made a, we made a pact before we came out here, I believe that we have um what we already, what we, what we want to learn, what we want to do. So I want, I don't want to keep shifting. I need to be in the presence, be present because I came down here for a reason. I need to make sure I'm getting these lessons spiritually. So if I keep shifting and I understand it gets boring here, it, it, you know, it, it sucks sometimes, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot going on. There's wars, there are all type of things and people may just want to get away or may just want to not feel, you know, it's like, I understand that, but like, don't forget we came down here and we don't want to miss what our purpose is for. And so with me hopping around, like, what am I really learning? And if I, there's no cheat code to life. So even like you said, yeah, I might, I might have more money or, but what about the people around me? And that's really what it's about the connections. You know, I've seen where people had NDEs near death experiences and they're saying they didn't really see anything, but like the, the kind of relationships they had with people, that's what played back, um, how, how they made other people feel when they judge people, things of that sort. So if we're hopping around and just trying to do like a cheat code, what are we really getting what we need from it like yeah you can easily go to a college and know all the course and the outline but did you really get what you needed so when it's time for you to move on to your to be the and actually in that field you know so that's what I always think about it like I know I came down here and I made an agreement with my soul family to do what I need to do so I need to just be in the now and that's the thing I feel like we're either trying to be in the past from nostalgia or we're trying to go further but we don't ever really take the time to just sit around and just sit in now and understand that okay this is I'm here for a reason this is where I'm supposed to be I'm where I'm supposed to be where I need to be here and if not I need to make the right adjustments now instead of trying to hop in and and you know take a shortcut oh that's such an amazing perspective um I agree with you as well um I think we're all here to learn something and have a specific impact. And some of the things we're supposed to learn, unfortunately, come through hardships or difficulties or setbacks that we have in life. And yeah, sometimes life can be mundane and it would be nice to shift to a reality where, I don't know, I'm I'm eating ice cream all day and not gaining 50 pounds, right? It would be nice to be there. And sometimes, yeah, maybe I might imagine that, but I think you're so right. There's something powerful about being in the present. And I think another reason why your story was so fascinating to me is because I'm always telling my friends, I'm like, oh, I wish I could go back to 
you know, sophomore year of college or freshman year of college. Like I would do things so much differently. Like I'd have a different major. I would do all these different things and then coming across your story. And it's like you experience life up until 23 and went back and, you know, to 10 years old. I, I realized I'm like, oh, wow, that would be that that must have been very jarring. Um, <laughs> so be careful what you wish for, um, especially with the things that you had to kind of like re-experience. So thank you so much for sharing your story. I really want to know what do you want people? I know we've talked so much about your story and like I've, we've gone down mm -hmm. a couple of different rabbit holes. But what do you want people to take away from your story? Like, what do you want the world to really understand from your story and how it really impacted your life? Love your people while you have them, while they're here. Um, there's way more than me, Sai. You know, I know it sounds like a transformer, but it's really true. Um, go with your intuition, with your feelings. Don't take my word for it. You know, um, ask yourself, does this feel right? And if not, it may not be your turn right now. And that's perfectly fine. Also, um, try to be more understanding to people who are, who have, who has had different experiences. Um, try to have an open mind. Even if you don't, like, there's a lot of things that I may not agree with someone on, but I don't judge them as a person. Um, and you never, you never know. You never know what people have been through. And just try to be kinder and nicer to people. And that's pretty much it. That's what I feel like I've learned from this experience is just that and just getting my third eye open and navigating through this life differently I, ever since this happened to me I've navigated through it so much differently like I've lost my grandmothers recently and I, it don't feel like a loss like and I was close to them and it's like it gave me so much more hope to know that if I could move in in the universe like that from one parallel to another parallel my grandmothers are probably like flying through the universe like it makes it a lot more easier for me of course I miss them but I feel them and um so yeah Thank you for sharing that. And again, thank you for sharing your story because I think it takes a lot of courage to admit to this experience, especially in the world that we live in. I think people are becoming more accepting, but you know, people are still going to be people. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm happy that you've received a lot of support and it's not just all negative. Have you shifted in perspective on anything recently to kind of just round up the episode? I don't believe so. I just feel like, and that's the thing. If I believe if it happened, I really don't have any knowledge about it. Everything seems the same to me. Um, I've never had like a big shift that I'm like, okay, yeah, why am I light again? Like, why am I jumping out of bed and my knees feel great? Like, I, I, I don't have that. But so I don't think I've shifted. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Michelle. Where can people find you if they want to follow you on TikTok or just get in contact with you? Well, I'm on TikTok. I'm Michelle Stacks Doss. Um, there's people who are impersonating me. So make sure I have like 117K followers. So that's how you would know that it's me. Um, I'm trying to get my YouTube up and running um, just in case something happens to TikTok. I want to still have that community. So um, it's also Michelle Stacks Doss also. And I'm just now getting that. It's under construction. So if you see, some, there are some few things on there. It's mostly like funny videos and stuff. But I'm starting to actually turn that into my actual like... Um, my actual channel and I'm thinking about I had a podcast before where I interview people who have experienced the same thing so I'm thinking about doing that again but I'm, I'm starting this all slow <laughs> oh yeah you should I, I think we would benefit really well from either a podcast or a YouTube platform that you create but thank you Michelle so much for stopping by Shifting Dimensions it was a pleasure having you thank you I appreciate it